I'd like to talk a bit about the rise of consumer monitoring and data. And as you can see from the image, how this occurs um, is through what we carry with us every day, our mobile phones. And I think many of you might have experienced that feeling of either um, leaving your mobile phone somewhere or not being able to find it and that feeling, um, that frantic feeling of looking for it because it's become so much a part of our everyday lives. Um, the way we communicate with friends and family, a lot of our, most of our shopping is online. Um, our, we're always searching for things online and storing things in the cloud. And what this actually means is that the range of data that is being collected is accumulating. That little cloud where all the data is stored means that we can just keep adding and adding to that. And um, the ways that we shop um, and do entertainment and interact online, um, this, this is the data that's being collected as those examples show on the screen. And this is, um, comes from a report from the Australian Consumer Policy Research Centre. And they really wanted to explore the emerging ways in which data is being collected uh, by the increasing number of consumer technologies. And uh, things like, um, for example, um, the devices you have in your home, um, that, can, that you can ask questions to um, are also adding to that range of data as well. This other um, excerpt from the Consumer Policy Research Centre report highlights how um, your life in data is being captured and collected uh, through a range of um, consumer monitoring sort of approaches, such as app interactions, surveillance cameras, smart TVs, home alarm systems, as well as the personal information shared on our platforms such as Facebook. And what this shows is that uh, within a 24 hour period, there's actually a massive amount of data that is collected about you from your device, your location, where you move within your home, um, or within your community or whether you're traveling um, interstate or overseas. Um, your usage behavior can be tracked as well in terms of um, your browsing history and searches and so forth. And also the content of all the things that you post on the different platforms such as Facebook and Instagram. And this data can be analyzed to show the different types of relationships you have um, in, on those different platforms and the ways you communicate with different people and organizations. And uh, as consumer technologies become more advanced and cheaper, um, they're also enabling new types of ways of collecting biometric data, such as the steps you do each day, the distance you travel, your heart rate, whether you've had a good night's sleep or not. And uh, so much of our, um, the things that we buy are often increasingly online as well. So there is a rich picture of all of our um, transactions online. The things that, the food we buy, the presents we buy, um, our everyday uh, shopping expense, our everyday shopping lists and so forth. And, um, who we do or don't donate to as well, that sort of data can be um, collected and analysed as well. And I think all of us have had that experience of um, looking for something online and a particular ad pops up. And as we know, the algorithms are designed so that are based on our search history, so that things that we've looked for in the past, um, they will nudge a particular type of ad or service um, in the belief that we are interested in those products or services. So in terms of a, uh, one particular um, type of data that is becoming, um, that is accumulating because of a consumer technology such as your smartphone is Google location history data. 
And what is highlighted here is a particular uh, journal article, which has looked closely at how to use Google location history data and for us to better understand um, uh, or fine scale human mobility. And what they've really highlighted in this particular article is the possibilities of this type of data and how it can be used for um, new types of research um, and research the different types of research and studies and how they're designed. So there's a lot of possibilities in terms of maybe engaging with people and understanding um, the finer details of how they move around a particular um, suburb or region. But what also the study highlights is that this data set um, is very particular and there, there might be particular biases in relation to the types of data that is collected and utilised as well. But overall, um, the rise of consumer monitoring and data is a growing area um, that we as digital researchers need to better grapple with and understand in terms of, because there is this growing amount of consumer data, um, how should we and um, how can we um, be incorporating it into our study designs? But then also thinking about the ethical implications in terms of um, things like privacy and pot the potential for discrimination and also the ways in which um, particular groups or populations might be um, advantaged or disadvantaged because of these new types of consumer data sets.